It's Shalom once again. This is Anai Rastafari Book Club. And this is another book right here, a very interesting book. This kind of goes with this particular book right here, The Church History, The Church History of Ethiopia, Michael Geddes, 1696 um, um, work, anti-papal work that um, recognized um, Ethiopia and the Ethiopian church as being a very unique church in a Christian sense, but also doubly unique in the sense that they are Christian, but they're black people, the African people, who have an ancient link with the Bible and the people of the book, thus fulfilling, once again, Amos 9 and 7, aren't you as the children of Ethiopian, and to me, O children of Israel. Now, this is, a, this is also another excellent book. Let's let, let, let you see the cover of this, right? This right here is called Light and Truth, right? Light and Truth. Light and Truth is collected from the Bible and ancient and modern history containing the universal history of the colored and Indian race from the creation of the world to the present time. This particular document right here, you can see the date down here, I think it's 18, what, 41? What is it, 1844. I know when we'll say all these old books, they're oldies, but it's goodies. It says that the good man takes out of his treasure things old and things new. And this is something else that's a thing old. But this is this book right here, we can do a whole lecture on this particular book. But more than that, we want to get these books into your hands, into your homes, your sense that you, your families, your children can have some very excellent resources. Now, as far as um, um, we put this under Ethiopian and Bible history, as well as Afro-American, Afro-American literature. Now, some of the things that we said about this book, was, which was published by a committee of colored gentlemen. Now, yes, we talk about Negro, Negro, Black, and colored. You understand these artificial statuses. But even at the time that these statuses were coming in, and what, what black people were, were, were still groping for who they were, we had these great intellectuals, you understand, these great minds and faithful people like R.B. Lewis. This is R.B. Lewis. He says a colored man. So we have to recognize that first blacks were called niggers. Really, they were called Ethiopian when over there, but when they came over here, they were called niggers, Negroes and, and niggers, right? Then they went to the level of, of, of colored, colored people before they got to the level that we now call black. You see, now most people call black or some even African-American. So don't let that um, confuse you or, 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 or deceive you. Now, this particular book, it speaks about um, the universal history of the colored and Indian race. Let us clarify Indian race. For a lot of the classical writers, when they say Indian, they were referring to, or the Indies, Ethiopia. This is, this is another hidden part of history. So we talk about India. There's an India-Ethiopia confusion amongst a lot of folks when they're looking at some classical authors and classical writers. Now, back in the 1844, I mean, think about this in America. Think about what was going on in America. Was this like roughly Civil War? or just prior to Civil War time, um, uh, or it, it's, it's before 1860 and the Reconstruction, and we had a black man, or a man who called himself at that time a colored man. You know, my Nana said, I'm not black, I'm brown. We're brown people. Some people say, oh, you, we, we all got to say we're black. No, I said, we have to get over this so-called black shit. And I say black shit because black doesn't have no nationality, you understand? It has no land rights. It has no really human rights because of the artificial status. You see? And even African American, African so called American, it is very dubious because it doesn't lay claim. You understand? Any, it's, very, it's so general. It's, it's too general. You understand? Better just to say Africans. So at least you are in the family of African nations, but then hyphenate and put Americans, so be it. You know, those are other discussions. What we're discussing right here 
for our Rastafari Book Club is the second, you understand, the second of the new um, publications, and it goes under the title, right, put it right here, the title of Light, right, and Truth by R.B. Lewis, Light and Truth by R.B. Lewis, and it's an excellent it's an excellent work. I was really, really um, ple pleasantly and pleasantly surprised with it. And I, I kept going over and say, wait, 1844. You understand, 1844. I'm like, wow. You know what I mean? And this kind of came out of one of the Harvard, I think, one of the Harvard College Libraries, this particular book. So we can see who, who had this book. It, it was entered by an act of Congress in the year 1836 by R.B. Lewis. Look at that. The book actually has an older, um, at least the research from 1836, right? The clerk's office uh, of the District Court of Maine transferred to um, uh, um, what, what Mr. Dalton, Robert, Scott, and Lewis of Boston, Mass, Mass October 10th, 1843. So, First, they had it entered into um, by an act of Congress, right, entered in by act of Congress, then it went through some more processes. But what's interesting is that this is one of the earliest, I will call it, we talk about people like Dr. Ben today. We might talk about people like um, 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 John Henry Clark or, or other writers and lecturers, but this is... This is definitely one that I think fell through the cracks because in doing a little bit of research, we only had found a Margaret Malamud who had said something concerning this particular book. Here's what we say about this book. Light and truth is yet another priceless and invaluable resource for those of us so-called black people, i.e. the Ethiopians at home and abroad. R.B. Lewis was a bold racial visionary and scholar of our divine heritage well ahead of his time because what he seems to come to in all of his research is the Ethiopian connection. Remember, this is 1844. So here we have a manuscript from 1844. Right now, quoting from the uses of antiquity in antebellum, African American history by Margaret Malamud, she aptly summarized the fact that, quote, over the course of the 1820s, African Americans began to write the history of their race in newspapers, pamphlets, and books. My reading of these texts reveal that abolitionists used classical authors, that those who wanted to end slavery actually went back to like the classical authors, talking about the Greco-Roman period authors, including Homer, Plato, um, Diodorus, uh, Siculus, um, Plutarch, and above all, Herodotus, according to Weissman, 1980, to bolster their claims for racial equality and to construct their own history. So when those who wanted to end slavery, both white and black peoples, right, who wanted to end the chattel slavery of, um, of, of, of black people here in America. Let's just use that, or so-called Negro people, black people, colored people here in America. Um, what they did is that they had went to classical um, authors and writers, such as we mentioned Homer, Plato, Diodorus, Seclus, um, Plutarch, and above all, Herodotus, right? And why did they go to these classical authors? To bolster their claims for racial equality, that the black man, or the African black man Ethiopian is not this savage that white supremacy was, 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 was telling itself and also making um, enslaved, brutalized, tortured people, speaking about the black folks, believe. So they turn to this classical history. She goes on to say, many, many further argued that Hannibal and the Carthaginians 
and the fathers of the early African church. I want you to make a note of that because here, this book right here is a church history. And notice that that's one of the little challenges right here is that you, you see how it has the history right here. There's like an F. Once you get over that and you recognize that it was at a time, plus some of the spelling is interesting. You know how they always say, oh, you don't know how to spell right. You know, if I, if I spell battle, that's B-A-T-T-E-L, which is literally battel. People say, oh, you're not spelling right here. A wonderful writer from 1696 and most likely a European um, white man. And a lot of other books, you can see the spelling is a little bit different. But it's an interesting read. It's a really interesting read. But on this book right here, which I think is a kind of a companion book, but this book I would recommend for those who are studying the Bible, who want to get a comprehensive um, Ethiop who is the Ethiopians in the Bible? Who is the, who is the real Ethiopians? And how does world history, biblical history confirm that this is an excellent book written by a self-professed colored man? Because remember, colored was, was a step higher in that sense than nigger, than the nigger word. Just like black was a certain step higher than that. And then for some, it was Ethiopian identity. And for many others who were hoodwinked and bamboozled by the civil rights movement, other things going down into Egypt, it became African-American. Yosem became the main prevailing concept. We'll, 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 we'll touch on that hopefully further. But many had argued, Yosem, that Hannibal and the Carthaginians and the fathers of the early African church, such as Tertullian, Oregon, Cyprian and Augustine were descendants of the ancient Egyptians. These illustrious historical genealogies prove that African Americans were not an inferior or degraded race and that they were capable of becoming civilized and productive Christian members of society. Now, some might find offense coming from a Negro, black, colored, and a Western Gentile misorientation. But now when you compare that with what the, the church history, right, the church history of Ethiopia speaks about, you can see how high, um, how highly regarded, you understand, the ancient black church African church was regarded. In fact, when you think about Christianity, most of the places in Africa and in the, in the Middle East that are hubs of, of Islamo-fascism and Sunni Muslimism used to be, including Egypt, Christian. And when they were Christian, it was Ethiopian and so-called black Christians, you understand, who were the stability of those societies. So we have to understand this to get a full, um, comprehensive view of our story, of our divine heritage. And this is a, 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 a surprising but a very excellent book right here. Such, um, quoting Margaret Malamud right here, because she had touched on this particular book and other books like it, and we said we would include that for some of the back notes. It says, such arguments not only incorporated African Americans into Western civilization, but also went so far as to put them at civilization's actual source. So first the argument was just to show that we are not these niggas, apes, alligators, coons, and possum, or NAACP. We're, we're more than that. But then as the researchers, the black and, and, and colored and Others started to research and find the evidence. They said, wait, it's not that black people are just the equals of white people, but if we are to believe the history, the documents, the monuments, the archaeology, they are the, 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 the civilized of us. They are not just so-called can be civilized, but they are the civilizers. So this, that was just quoting Margaret Mead there, her last her last statement that we quote, such arguments not only incorporated African Americans into Western civilization, not just incorporating us and say that, yes, we're part of Western civilization, going back to Greco, Roman times, or Egyptian times, Ptolemaic times, so forth and so on, but actually 
they went so far as to put them as civilization's actual source. And this particular book right here, it actually goes into and demonstrates the details of that, some very wonderful details. I think this is an excellent um, biblical as well as it, it, it's where Bible history and so-called uh, history history actually meets for our benefit as a people. I would highly recommend this as a as a um, like a Bible study. We didn't put it on the Bible study. We say Bible history, but it should be understood that this is an excellent book for Bible study, Light and Truth by R. B. Lewis. We say, concluding the notes here, that this book provides proofs of many of these truths backed by the historical, archaeological, and biblical facts that R. B. Lewis documented this present volume, Light and Truth that the true source of such ancient civilizations was, was Ethiopic and, therefore, Ethiopian. For an 1844 book by a colored man, as he called himself, remember 1844, his testimony is worth being remembered and herein republished by the Lion of Judah Society, for the Ethiopians at home and abroad. Very important when we're talking about our divine heritage. This particular document right here, um, known as Light and Truth. And this is this is the cover right here of it. All right. Light and Light and Truth. All right. Let's see if we can show you show you the time. I mean this book right here, we wanna you know, in the very opening, you see the history of man, primitive man, the land of Ethiopia. So you can see from the very, from the very, um, from the very beginning, right there. You know what he's touching on. All right. We're gonna, we're gonna, hopefully, we'll be able to touch on this book a little bit more. Um, in some, um, some of. I mean, he just. Let me just give you some of the chapters before we go in, in this. We have one more particular book, and sisters, I've been, I've been, I've been promising this particular book. Say that when it's coming forward, I'll let you know. And that is the Legends of Our Lady Mary. That's the next book we want to show you um, that that we have available. It's here. But in this particular book, he talks about the history of man. He breaks it down from the biblical generations, ancient cities and kingdoms. Speaking about the cities of Ethiopia first and foremost, the first city builders, chapter three the antiquity of America, ancient kings and wars, colored generals and soldiers, destruction of Jerusalem, the present state of Judah and Israel, the Hebrews or Israelites and Jews, Indian tribes in America, the true Christians in this land are Indians. Very interesting statement there. The arts and sciences, um, eminent colored men, the great historical ages, the ancient Arabians, yes, the ancient Arabs, the real true Arabs, before all this Islamofascism, were African, were black, were Ethiopian, in other words. Um, make that connection with, with the ancient Arabic language. You, you know, um, the, modern, um, the modern connections are interesting, I just say that, but the history of the prophets, um, the different historical periods. Then the last chapter, chapter 14, he touches on Saint Domingo or Haiti. He speaks on Haiti, spelling Haiti H-A-Y-T-I. It's interesting how he begins off on Ethiopia and he ends on, on, on Haiti. A, a very excellent document and we're going to try to offer like the Decum as Amorid, the disciples, those who are registered, um, certain discounts on when they order it. We still have to work out how we can do that with the publisher, but definitely we want to make sure that ones who want to get a copy of any of these books, you understand, are able to affordably get a copy, especially if they are registered disciples, you understand, because that's what it's about. It's about study, it's about learning, and these documents are very, very important. We're so happy to have this in print, and these two right here kind of like go together, these two right here. 
I mean, it's kind of hard to say which one you should read first. It kind of all depends on your focus. On the Ethiopianism focus, we'll say that it's this book right here, Light, Light and Peace, on the Ethiopianism focus. Um, on the more exclusive ancient church history of Ethiopia um, and certain facts that um, have been suppressed, they're still there, they're still true, but they don't advertise it um, anymore. We have to go back about 200, 300 years, 300 plus years to this particular book right here. So we have these two books now available, now on sale and available, The Church History of Ethiopia, right, and Light and Truth, all right, so check us out, www.lojsociety.org forward slash books. So once again, get a copy today. Shalom. Rastafari. All right.